Hi everyone, my name is Sincere, and today Teen Advisory Group is going to be talking about a teen-led discussion-based podcast that aims to engage youth in topics pertinent to our lives. The topics are covered are loosely linked to monthly teen subscription pack. You may be wondering, what is a teen subscription pack? So, the teen subscription packs are basically bundles of free content that we as a teen advisory create for you each month around a specific topic, such as back to school, which is this month's theme. So, the first item in um, this month's pack is a pencil pouch. Um, And then these are like plain, so you can get creative with them and like personalize them however you want. And then inside, there's some like different colored uh, permanent markers and then highlighters. The next thing we have is a notebook that you can use for school. And it's really handy because you'll always need a notebook. A couple of cool little buttons that the librarians actually hand make. So please take care of your buttons, I guess. Um, And you can like put these on your bag, wear them around or use them to decorate something. Next thing is our book. So this month, I think we actually had two options for them. So you either have New Kid or You Should See Me in a Crown as book options. And both of these are really cool. So I'll definitely like make the time to read these. The last item is a fidget toy. So these are really great, especially for school or if you just need something to fidget with. Um, I have this like squishy ball thingy. Um, and I think there's like a lot of variety in which one you could get. Um, I think there was like poppets, fidget cubes, uh, wacky tracks, bicycle chains, and like other stress balls. So um, I think you'd get one of those items. And that's it for this month's pack. So if you do want to sign up for a future subscription pack, you can visit ipsylibrary.org slash subscription packs. Um, And now I'm going to pass it over to Sophie. Are we going back to school? Are we not going back to school? What's going on? Nobody knows. This is a very confusing time. Today, we're going to talk about it. I'm Sophie, and I'm here with Amelia and Aisha. And um, today, we are going to be talking about going back to school. Everyone's kind of like nervous and excited, but also kind of unsure about where things are going because there's a lot of new information about the Delta variant in the news. Like, how are you guys feeling about going back to school so far? Honestly, like, I'm feeling really nervous because, like, I am, I'm going into 10th grade, but even, like, I didn't really have, like, you know, a freshman year experience. I don't know how things are going to work. And, like, because, like, it was online last year, so we didn't have exams. Um, we didn't, like, have, like, tests or anything like that. And, like, it, it worked kind of differently because because it was online, I guess. We, like, it was kind of more independent. Like, if you finish your work, like, you can leave, you know. And, honestly, that kind of just worries me about, like, how everything's going to work. So I'm kind of nervous. I totally get that. I mean, even though I'm going into my junior year, like my freshman year was cut off short and after like learning online for a whole year it's kind of hard to get back into that um into that like role of continuously studying for tests and then like being paying attention to class the whole entire time and then like working with others it's so different being in person versus being online and it's just it's just going to be such a big change and i it's going to be super hard it's definitely going to be an adjustment. I, I also think it'll be really strange. And I just wonder how, um, I think I should mention something about like tests and like how, how we're kind of assessed. And I feel like that this year, I actually kind of liked that a lot of the assessments were like more project-based rather than like here, like what's this, when was this? Like it, it's it's more like kind of critical thinking assessment rather than like, just like facts except for maybe like math I guess but I don't know I just I actually really like that kind of assessment so I'm just kind of curious about what kinds of things that we learned that worked really well in virtual learning are going to be integrated 
into our school now. We were talking about um, a little bit earlier about uh, what kind of supplies we're going to need because nobody knows because last year all of our books were online and all the materials were online. So what are we supposed to bring? Like, are we gonna need folders or notebooks? Are we still gonna use paper for stuff or is everything gonna be online? Yeah, I definitely agree with like what Sophie said about um, the test and stuff. Actually me, like I'm not a good test taker and like having like those projects and like critical thinking like assignments was a lot easier. And I feel like the online um, format, at least for my school, like, I don't know, I feel like it was really organized and stuff. And it like, especially like if you're a different kind of learner, if you're someone who doesn't really retain everything that goes on in class and has to like, you know, review everything they covered afterwards, like that's how I am. And it was easier because like I could, if I miss something or if I like didn't understand something, I could easily go back and like watch a recording of what happened. But in person, like, I guess if you miss it during class, you miss it and for you. So um, yeah, I also wonder if we're gonna continue doing some of like the online um, assignments and stuff like that. I'm completely the same way, Aisha. I just, I feel like, especially in like biology and math specifically and things where they're really technical based, I will like not retain anything, but then later I'll do like some of my own research and I'll be like, oh, like I think my, te my teacher mentioned that. Like, oh, okay, this makes more sense. But if you just like taught me a lesson and then immediately afterward gave me a test, I probably wouldn't do very well on it because I just feel like I need to like, look at multiple resources and like I'm a, I'm a pretty like visual learner and I like reading as opposed to like listening I have ADHD so I just tune out a lot and I feel like virtual learning if you're actually putting effort into it and like working to like learn the content then that might be a better fit for people who have like shorter attention spans or aren't as good at like retaining information uh, when we go into like note-taking uh for my first two months of freshman year, everything was online. We had Google Slides, so we could basically look back at the recordings the teachers did and just go look at what they said. But for my third semester in spring, I had to get, it was, we just had to go back in person and take all our notes ourselves. And the, most of the information from the, well, the classes were written. And uh, for one of my classes, I had to use paper only since they didn't allow electronics for that. Right. And it's like, honestly, I don't know what it's like for a lot of other people. I know, I know people have problems with their internet or they have siblings to take care of. And there's a lot of um, inequity when it comes to digital learning. But um, most of the people that are in kind of like my social sphere um, don't have a lot of those barriers so I only know people who really like either don't maybe don't necessarily like it but like this kind of platform works for them and my question is if in a perfect scenario where it's like quiet all the time and you don't really have any other responsibilities except focusing on school and your internet works great like why would you when we go back set it up any differently than that like I feel like you're just if something is working and people are kind of succeeding in that way, I feel like as teachers and like as schools, we should take that into account and try to like meet the needs of people who that worked really well for it, you know? I think that's just like another thing to consider because like, like bouncing the idea back onto like the project-based test, I feel like especially with standardized tests, you really have to memorize certain like aspects when before taking the test. But the problem with that is, especially for me, um, right after I take that test or right after that lesson is done, I completely forget everything. Like if you asked me about that lesson again, I would like not be able to like, like talk about it again. I would not remember any of the information I retained because I only like specifically target certain aspects just for that lesson and just for that test versus project-based testing where it's like you get to build off those ideas you really get to branch off and like independently like research and like interpret it in your own way which really helps and then on to what like Caden said about like 
note taking um this is kind of like different than what he said but in terms of note taking in person i'm a very tedious person who has to write every single thing that the teacher writes down so my like problem is if we go back in person like I'm also a slow writer, which doesn't help because if people talk fast and I write, it's not going to be helpful. So I just want, I just hope they have like the same resources of us like being able to go back and be able to write what they're teaching just so I can able, just so I'm able to like retain it in my own way. Because even after I write, I don't retain it. I have to go back and read it again. So I want to be able to read over all of it before finishing it up. Uh, what if you think like, do you like, have you ever, do you take notes on like a device, like a laptop, tablet, or? I think it depends on classes because like a lot of the times I like taking notes on paper just cause it helps me like remember things better. But if it, but sometimes it's just more efficient to type but I don't retain information that well when I type, so. For me, um, the complete opposite. I, I do the same thing as you. I write everything the teacher says, but it's like at a certain point, for the Google Docs, I, which is what I use, it's like there is, it's, it's slowing down and you're going to have to move to a different document, which could mess up everything since you're having two different documents or more for one class, which is, which can be a very big pain, especially in long sessions. Can I be 100% honest now? Like I do not, I stopped taking notes probably halfway through the year. Just because, you know, for, for a while, I, th I thought it was helping, sort of, but really, my teachers, all of the notes are on Google Slides that are on Google Classrooms that we're allowed to look at during the test. Like, I think one of the reasons why I did, I normally don't do very well in subjects like math and biology, but for a lot of our assessments, we were given, like, here are all the slides, here are all the notes, here are all the formulas and all of the tips for these math things, you can look at these while you're taking the tests. And, but normally we're, we're not allowed to do that. So I'm, I'm just hoping that they kind of keep that while, while we're doing tests. And maybe it differs from like math teacher to math teacher, but I just found that to be a really helpful resource. Also at our school, um, mine and Amelia school, if you turn a project in on time, th there are some exceptions with like certain IB assessments, but like, nine out of 10 times, if you turn in a project or a test and you don't do very well on it, as long as you turn it in on time, you can retake it and resubmit it. And your teacher leaves notes <clears throat> and is like, here, this is what you need to, here's, here's what you did wrong and here's how to do it better. And I feel like in general that that's just a better way to learn because like with like standardized testing, if you just take something once it's not really like how are you supposed to learn from it how are you supposed to learn how to do better next time or to actually like you know learn from your mistakes yeah like i um like in my english class like usually the teachers like they don't give you like any sort of like second chance they don't really make exception like unless like obviously you have like a extenuating circumstance but usually they don't but like this year um my English class my English teacher like she noticed that a lot of kids were like struggling with a certain aspect of like writing and stuff like that so when we had to do like a big essay project and she realized like a lot of the kids were like lacking um in their writing and she like ended up talking to each of us individually and give giving individual feedback and she actually gave us the opportunity to like resubmit our work which i think was like really helpful to everyone and really considerate thing for teachers to do i think that's just like another thing having that big shift of like taking tests online and having more resources being available to you and then like we're about to assuming it we're still going to do this we're going to go back in person like I just want I just hope like schools realize that our like attentiveness and our um our practice in like studying is completely different from when we are online versus when we were in person because at this point we have been online for 
um, well, most people have been online for about like one and a half years. So we're kind of like out of practice from like continuously studying and constantly like taking notes and doing homework like online versus like doing it in person because those are like two completely different things. Honestly, I don't really study. I mean, maybe sometimes for like Spanish just because of like vocabulary, but I, I like just, I just do all of the homework assignments and then I'm usually in pretty good shape for the test. I have one friend who doesn't do any of the homework at all, but like they cram like crazy and they study out outside of that and then they do really well on tests, which doesn't make sense to me because I don't know anyway, but, um, but yeah, I totally agree with you. I think like people will kind of have to change the way that they're learning. And, and I hope honestly, I mean, I feel like this year, especially teachers have definitely been more compassionate and understanding and like working hard to reach out to students. Um, and I just hope that that's kind of retained once we go back to in-person because, I mean, I feel like on, on some level people can fall through the cracks of mine, but also I feel like it's harder just because everyone's like grades are right in front of you and everyone's kind of consolidated into like one space on your screen. And so on some levels it might actually be easier to like kind of find out like who's really paying attention, like who's participating in class, like who's turning in all of their assignments and who's not. Like, I feel like that information is more consolidated. So it's actually somehow easier for teachers to kind of assess like who's struggling and who's doing really well, you know? Yeah, um, like I definitely agree, like the online learning style and like the in-person learning because at least for me like personally like when we were like in person it was like it usually took me a lot longer and like I had to do like a lot more studying and stuff like that but online I did better because I knew like I was able to you know go back look at recordings and like I was I guess I think teachers were more considerate obviously and they gave like more frequent breaks and like because I actually have like a visual disability so I'm like I can't like you know retain everything and like um I guess I don't process information as fast and I need more like breaks to succeed and I guess teachers they gave a lot more breaks in between classes and they gave like independent work time and stuff like that so I guess that was really like helpful this year exactly like not only that like adding on to what Aisha said, we had, especially for me in Sophie school, we had a lot of time to work on our like assignments and projects and stuff like that. And the problem is, is like whether or not you use that time to actually do your work, that's that's on you. But like the fact that we were given that time allows us to like really work through our projects and like really retain all of that information. But um, when we go back in school, the pro like my worry is that I know that like this year they like scheduled back a couple of like the content just because like um, our classes were shorter at least for me in Sophie's school but when we go back in person I don't know how that's going to be like because now we're just going to have like more time to learn new things but at the same time that might be a bit overwhelming just because of like all the classes all the stuff we have to remember and all the tests so I just like I want schools to like be attentive that taking breaks and having more work time allows us to be more um, efficient and working and allows us to like put in our best effort, especially with projects and other assessments and stuff like that. Yeah, it's like, are they just gonna try and cram all this stuff into this short time? I feel like a lot of times classes are like, it's just an hour and well, we have block scheduling at our school. So each class is um, like an hour and a half long normally. So, and a lot of times it's just like an hour and a half of lecturing. Like you just have to sit there and listen. And I don't know, I, I like class discussions personally, but I also really appreciate work time in class just because like I have a lot of extracurricular activities and sometimes it's really hard to like find time to do homework and to do essays and to kind of like keep up on that work. So I'm just, 
also hoping that we're still having individual work time in class. Also just like quiet work time. I think one of the reasons why it's been easier for me personally to keep up on my work is because a lot of times during like quote unquote quiet work time in class, like everyone's talking and like I just get distracted listening to everyone's conversations and stuff. And I feel like I'm, I don't know. I mean, obviously you can get distracted in other ways, like in your house, but I, I just hope that when we go back that it's really an environment where people can actually like focus and, and kind of thrive. Like I, I want to be social, but I also want to be able to get my work done during class because I have other commitments that I need to use my time for outside of class, you know? I don't yeah. know. Oh, um, I don't know about how your school runs, but uh, every, my, I think it was fall semester in my math class, I had to take tests every two weeks. So basically they cram the, a whole, um, like a whole unit in two weeks or even one week. And throughout that whole semester, we would basically learn a whole subject, may it be algebra one, calculus, biology, Spanish, whatever. And it was interesting to see how it went. Some people, um, according to the teacher, some people, a lot of people failed. Like they were doing very poorly overall and they tried to help and I don't know how it went, but it was interesting to see or adapt from an environment of a whole school year for just learning what basically one concept, but at the school I'm at right now, we're learning everything in a matter of 15 weeks. Yeah, I feel like a lot of times um, school t content is structured where like the stuff that's farther along in the curriculum, like it, it builds, it's based on what you learn earlier which is kind of like, you know, you're like, okay, like you gain skills as you go, but it, it makes it really hard for people to catch up because then you're trying to like figure out what's going on, but you need to basically go back to the beginning and like catch up on all the other stuff first. And it's just really hard to like, it's, it's just really hard to catch up once you fall behind. Like I, one of my friends came to me and was like, Sophie, I am literally feeling all of my classes, what do I do? And I'm like, well, how are you failing all of your classes? And he's like, well, I just haven't been doing the work for the whole year. <laughs> and this was in like May. <laughs> and I was like, well, what? What do you What do you mean? Like, do you, can't you just, are you keeping up with the work now? And he's like, no, I don't know how to do any of it because all of the skills that I need to do what we're learning now, we learned at the beginning of the year. So, I don't, I don't really know how to tackle that, but I think that that's just kind of something that makes it difficult for people to like catch up when they fall behind. For me, I think that's like another thing with the like extra time, work time we had, because a lot of the times, even when I'm in school, I might not understand it, but when I go home and I go through it, I interpret it in my own way, which really helps me understand it. And then I do my assignments and stuff like that. But especially because this year, I don't know about everyone else, but our school had um, asynchronous Wednesdays where like we didn't necessarily have to log on into Zoom. And then some classes gave us like assignments to do for that day. But like most for me, most of them like didn't. But that like really gave me like uh, like that was either like a really big mental health day for me or if it was like allowed me to like go back, reviewed all the content I was working with. And it really helped me like build off of like what I learned before, like, cause like Sophie said, we have like certain, like we have A days and B days. So we have different classes that alternate each day. So um, that actually helps me like um, go back to what I learned in the class before. And then like gives me more time to like go over the content we just learned and like really interpret it in my own way before moving forward into the next step. I really appreciated the asynchronous Wednesdays. I think that um, this year when we go back in person, they're actually going to try and incorporate it. Like we're going to have short classes for some of the day, but then we're going to have quote like office hours for um, 
like a couple hours on the second half of the day. And I don't know, I just found that chunk of time really valuable because it's like a day in the week where you can, you know, focus on your homework assignments and you can study and you can come and check in with your teachers and get help. Um, that was also a really good day for like, I, I know that I did a lot of kind of virtual community service on that day. Um, it's, it's hard sometimes to find times to do that, but I think being able to do that uh, in, in school and to just kind of have an extra day to like catch up on stuff was um, really useful. Yeah, my school started like the A and B days this year. And I don't know, I feel like because our classes, we only had like um, some classes on one day and then some classes on another day. And then our classes were also longer. And I feel like that helped just because, I don't know, just kind of easier to learn from it. And like you had time to work on assignments and you could like ask like the teachers for help, like on homework assignments and stuff like that. And then we also had asynchronous. We had asynchronous Fridays though. And yeah, I feel like that was also really nice because I mean, most of the teachers, they didn't really assign work. It was kind of just like a catch up day if you're behind and stuff like that. And it helped me like balance my, like, you know, college work and like extracurriculars. So it was really nice to have that extra day to yourself. Maybe this is kind of like, I'm kind of like doing like a 180 over here, switching up the topic a little bit, but just going back with all the news about like breakthrough cases and stuff with like the Delta variant, like I know my school right now from what I heard is planning like, okay, everyone wears masks and we social distance, but they're like not doing daily testing or anything like that. And like, we're going to have probably around 30 people in the classroom or any of you guys like nervous about going back or like a little scared yeah I'm pretty nervous I'm yeah you know like I go to a really small school but we didn't like last year we didn't do any like hybrid or any actually they did have like a, um an in-person option and but in the entire high school I think only three people did it so we didn't have any cases with that and then the only time we actually went to school it wasn't everyone. We want to do like state testing, like the PSAT and SATs. And a lot of people didn't show up. It was like, I think maybe 10 people, but even then we had a case and it were like, oh my God, like the one day we went, we had um, someone test positive. So it's kind of, you know, scary, especially like, I don't know, in school, we're just all like so close together, closer together in a classroom and like I don't know how I feel about it but like you know breathing in the same like breathing on me like <laughs> especially in the hallways like at least my school the hallway is like so small and everyone is shoving through because like you only have like five minutes in between class and you if you're late you know there's con consequences so yeah I don't know how the social distancing will work but yeah I totally get the Aisha at our school um we planned to go back in person. It was like three or four times. And then it got pushed back those three or four times until April, which was like super late in my opinion. So yeah, but for me, the fact of going back in person, it is kind of nerve wracking for like various reasons. First, there's like the social aspect that like Aisha touched up on like being near people and then like COVID cases rising and then being near people it's just very like cautious at that time even if you're vaccinated I think it's still like a bit oh like a lot to consider and then also like like I said earlier going back into like the, ha the like old habits of learning in person and being attentive during classes and actually taking notes it's all just going to be very new and a very big change and it's going to be overwhelming when we talk about like things like the PSAT and in-person classes, uh, when I took my PSAT, there were around 50 to 70 people that attended the whole thing. And of course, we were, we have, so we have, I think it's seven primary buildings. We were placed in the TI building and the rooms were, I think, were comprised of 10 people. So basically there were seven rooms and there's an instructor that monitored everything and for classes in the spring, which is when I went in person, some of my classes went up to, I think, 20 people. And of course, six feet uh, our desks were 
spaced six feet apart, even though they are next to each other. Uh, it was really interesting. I was not a lot of people were afraid. There were actually a fair bit of people who were on campus in the spring semester. Yeah. Um, so at, at my school, we had like hybrid learning at like the end of April. And I chose to opt out just because it was like, I, I don't know. It was like, well, there's only a month left of school really and like I don't think I would have been vaccinated like fully vaccinated in time to like go back for hybrid learning so I just didn't really feel safe going into that environment like with without that protection um but I know that they had like six people in a room with everyone socially distant and they were doing testing every day like you had to fill out a health form at the beginning and like everyone ate lunch in the same room, like separated, but they were talking about, they were like, well, people are gonna wear masks, but we're gonna have like 30 people in a classroom and everyone's gonna eat lunch in the cafeteria. And like, we're not doing this. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that just, it just, I'm just stressed out thinking about it. I remember when I went to go get my vaccine, like I went into a Kroger and it was the first time I had ever been in like an indoor public space since the pandemic. And I like, had a nervous breakdown basically because it was just like so stressful being around like a bunch of strangers after just being told like you know this is dangerous like you're not supposed to do this and I just aside from like the physical safety like nervousness like I just I'm trying to think about how I'm going to adjust being around a bunch of people after like not being around people and being told that it's really dangerous to be around people for like a really long time and it might not be the same way for everyone but everyone in my household takes COVID very very seriously and so like I think that's also going to be another adjustment that I'm sure other people are also going to have to kind of deal with. Yeah, adding on to what Sophie said, um, at our school, we'd have like this sort of section because our school has middle schoolers at this end section two. And then so in middle school, it's obviously sixth through eighth. And um, I might not be up to date with this, but i um, pretty sure only people who can get a vaccine are 12 and older. Correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, yeah, you're correct. Okay. But. Yeah, so that means the sixth graders haven't been vaccinated yet, obviously, because it's not available to them. So like a big concern and another thing to take into consideration with us is that we're also going to be surrounded with like more little like more people that aren't vaccinated yet, mostly because they don't have access to it. So it's just like another thing to worry about, especially going into the school year, too. Yeah, you know, they um. Why High, which is the school that Amelia and I go to, they um, put out a poll at the end of the year that said that over like upwards of 80% of the student body is like fully vaccinated, which is really good, like especially in comparison to a lot of other places. Um, so that's sort of makes me feel a little bit better, but they're, um, yeah, the sixth graders haven't been vaccinated yet. And I know in an email, they were like, well, they're just the sixth graders are just going to have class outside until like it's like, you know, until they can get their vaccine. And I'm like, but what if it rains? <laughs> what about when it gets cold? <laughs> what about oh, my God. I didn't even think about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't I have no idea how that's going to work. But yeah. Also, because um, like so like Aisha's school, me and Sophie's school is like relatively small. And realistically, there's only one really big hallway to get into like all the smaller like s sections of classes where we need to go to. Well, I guess technically two, but the other one's like not the one most people take, but I'm assuming they're gonna adjust based on like COVID and stuff. So it's like really easy to like come across like more people I guess obviously they're gonna like make sure that doesn't happen but it's just like another thing to take and like to be mindful of especially when we go back in person yeah I know a lot of bigger schools have like you know classrooms that aren't used every class so they can kind of make classes smaller and spread people out 
but we go to a really small school and we don't just have like a gazillion classrooms so we can't really spread people out unless we do like a sort of hybrid thing where we have people come in on different days so I have no idea how like everyone is just are are we just not going to socially distance when we go back like I'm just kind of confused on how that's supposed to work yeah for my school it's like um the elementary has a separate building and then like um there's a separate building for yeah there's a separate building for elementary and then there's a one bigger building for middle school and high school so middle school is like on one end and the high school is on the other end and like for both the middle school and high school it's literally like one small hallway and then all the classes are in between there and even our gym like our our cafeteria is in gym are kind of like interconnected and yeah so honestly I don't know how social distancing is going to work and another thing um because since like my little sister she's six so like she's going to first grade and obviously she can't get vaccinated but I kind of think about these younger kids because like they don't they don't like take this stuff seriously because like they don't know they don't know any better like my younger sister she's just so excited to go back in person she's like I'm gonna see people I don't have to sit on zoom all day she's like when can I do I still have to wear a mask and I'm like yes you do there's still a pandemic going on but like I don't know especially for younger kids like I don't know how they're gonna social distance like even like kindergartners preschoolers because like they literally write next to each other playing with each other like all the time exactly like little kids are super hyperactive um maybe this is just an over assumption for all kids but like they touch everything <laughs> they like i don't want to say lick everything because that's weird but like they touch a lot of things they hold things they probably shouldn't they i'll just go ahead and say it. they lick things they probably shouldn't it's just it's a strange world but it's just i don't know how they're gonna like keep in mind of that <laughs> sorry i just like i don't know why that came in mind to me like i don't know kids looking things they shouldn't like. <laughs> i totally understand what you're saying though i like did some virtual volunteering this year and like uh i think a second grade classroom and like just kids are very very they just lack like spatial awareness and i think it's kind of hard for them to like on a lot of levels understand what's going on and like the severity of it and like what's at stake and like how it's just dangerous to touch people and that's really depressing like it's it's freaking sad you know like obviously like I don't know I, I just want to hug everyone and like I you know I think social distancing is depressing too so I can't imagine how like a very small child who doesn't really have a lot of self-control feels like and I know when I go back, I'm going to have to be like, okay, like, you have to, you can't hug anyone, and, like, you just have to, like, like keep your hands here, and, like, you know, and, I mean, if that's hard for me, like, I bet it's really hard for, like, very small people, and also, I didn't even think about this before, but, like, all of the people, like, even if you're vaccinated, and you're, say, like, a high school student, if you have, like, younger siblings who can't get vaccinated yet, like, and you, because I'm pretty sure that you can still, like, carry COVID like even if you don't have it like can you still like you can still transmit it to like your younger siblings and stuff and so I don't know I guess there's just a lot a lot to worry about I think for a while it was like okay well we once we get a vaccine like everything will be better like we can everything's fine like we can all be with each other and like we don't have to worry about anything anymore and like this will solve the pandemic but evidently that's not what's happening. And there's a lot of people who won't even take the vaccine. Like in a lot of other countries, they're like, well, we don't have enough. And like, like I was listening to something on NPR the other day that said that less than 1% of like, I think I could be wrong, but like Zambia's like population does it have, um, is it fully vaccinated? Because like, they just can't get enough supplies. But here in the US, people are just like, no, we we have enough. We just don't want to take it, <laughs> which is really, really sad to me, honestly. But so I, I don't know. I guess there's just um, a lot of work that we still have to do that I people weren't really anticipating or did, didn't know if it was going to be a problem, which is kind of sad because I, I want to get back to normal. But we just gotta, you know, 
have have good mental fortitude and and adjust and I don't know I think going back if we do end up going back which I'm not sure at this point because like there is a lot of stuff that's changing pretty rapidly but if we go back we just kind of got to also keep in mind that it's not like everything is getting better right now and like we have to be really mentally disciplined when it comes to being safe and like following health procedures yeah a lot of people are like it's just like a cold and like no one's gonna die from it but like I'm an athlete and a singer like I need my lungs to be in good shape to do the stuff that I like to do so I would prefer not to get that even if it's not quote like severe which I don't actually think is true I mean there's a lot of stuff in the news now about like people who are under the age of 50 like between the ages of like even like 18 and like 25 who are ending up in the hospital because of COVID so I think we just need to really like reassess how like dangerous this actually is to people in our age group you know and I guess to end it off I'll give you guys a little something to think about um whether you're going to school online or in person what are some things you're most excited for going back to school and what are some of your goals for this school year and yeah so this concludes this episode of tag your it until the next episode you can check us out at ipsy library teens on instagram and if you're interested in joining these discussions the teen advisory group meets twice a month on tuesdays at 4 30 and you can sign up for that at ipsylibrary.org tag